Okay, nice little trip down to uh, Wales there. Back on after doing the brake caliper rust up. We've got the brake caliper kit to fit, but also upper and lower ball joints have arrived. These are tired. So we're gonna take these off, split pins out, and then the, uh, the retaining nut for the ball joint off, one for the bottom to go. Loosen and then finish off with a ratchet. And then we've got in my hand here is the ball joint splitter which you can get from the club mark free owners club for this they'll send it out to you very kindly benefits of the club that fits between these two ball joints and it expands out with 21 spanner and splits the balls apart tried and tested tool between it goes and then we just open it out Expertly made by Jane and Marky Mark Free. Thanks for that. We offer it between incoming. Expand it out once it goes between the little the nipples of these ball joints. A little bit of dirt in them, stopping the ball engaging, but it will go. We lock. I'll show you how it goes. It's not quite in position there, but you can see that this will push apart both at the same time. So it'll split your uppers and lowers. Always replace your uppers and lowers in pairs, both sides. So you're going to do this. It's all four to go. That's upper ball joint and lower ball joint. All together, please. Don't just do one. It's not worth it. Where have I gone? There's my hand. Just screwing it back in so I can get it in here. Going the wrong way. Yours for 4K. Now... You can see why I didn't put the brakes and the calipers on yet. Then we're going to get the croc sander, the power file just here, our power file ready with a zirconia belt on it. And we're going to grind the heads off these rivets and the ball joints will fall away. It's a little bit tricky in there, but the power file does good for that situation. These ones, lower one requires these tie bar bolts to be also undone. And then we're ready. Power file next then. I don't know why I said 11 before, 13 and 13 there. Right, copper slip on, hub goes back on now. Track would end into the hub. Obviously we did then uh, stabilizer bushes there. So that's it. Upper and lower is done, old ones out. I say slightly drill into the rivets, it weakens them. And then they'll come out because I say those rivets, when they squash them in, they slightly expand out into the, uh, the metal and you don't just push out, in other words, you drill the, you sand the heads off them, they don't just knock out, they're actually crushed in there. So by drilling them, you weaken them. Sometimes you might have to drill all the way through. In this case, all five came out complete. So that's a little tip for you there, for getting up, if you're ever dealing with the ones that have been riveted on. If they have been riveted on, you've got original factory uh, ball joints. You can see the damage on these. Well...
Okay, all ball joints are on. Track rod ends are back in. Both ball joints on. So we're done there. You see them there. So that is ready. Steering's operating okay. It's time to do the brake calipers now. Get them fitted. And that's that part of the suspension done. We may have to replace these, and you could argue should have done it when the tie bar's off, but I haven't got those bushes yet. It's an easy job to just uh, lift that tie bar, no problem. We can do that. Just get this back together. I'm going to go on and assemble those um, brake caliper seal kits in. Let's get to the bench and get them seal seals into those brake, uh, brake calipers. Project Papa Pete, see at the controls. Right, before we go in, we tidy all the tools away, put everything back. I'll just run you through what tools I just used for that upper and lower joint, ball joint job. Croc sander with some Zirconia 80 grit belts. That was a Makita unit. You can use what you want. Long nose pliers, gripping, decent ones. Ten tools. Pulling out the uh, locking pin on the castle nut. You don't reuse a locking pin in the new kits because they come with a what they're called, washer, lock nut, lock nut. So we don't need uh, to put pins back in and castle nuts because it's a locking nut. Okay, 19 spanner for one of the bolts, 13 for the smaller ones, 22 for another bigger bolt. Chisel to chisel off the old ball joint, ball joint separator or a Mark III Club One separator if you've got dimples in the ball joint ends. If not, Use the fork, only four quid. Larger fork wasn't needed. Battery ratchet, really handy for tight spaces. Makes the job easier, but you could just use socket. 17 on the ratchet, helps. 11 wasn't needed. Copper hammer for striking. Another set of grips weren't used. They were there if we needed them. Larger moles, we didn't use those. Uh, another harder hammer if we needed it we didn't oh no sorry did strike with that allen key for locking the middle of the ball joint to stop it spinning when you're tightening it up into the uh, hub so you lock the allen key on the middle you'll see that when you get your ball joints drill sockets drill for drilling those rivets although i must say that side i struck it and didn't need to drill those it came out so yours may well do that if, if they do get stuck drill them little pilot holes in ear defenders for when you're striking and i think that's it that was the larger drill bit if we needed it we didn't in case the smaller pilot holes didn't quite get them uh, rivets out you'd have gone a size up didn't need to so that's all the tools that we use for that job what I do now before I start anything else just wipe everything down put everything away so you're back to square one then you're clean and good to go for these brake calipers there you go it's good to just keep a system going and stay methodical so you're not tripping over tools you know where you are you know what I mean I put a new seal kit in pistons are in I'm just spreading the pistons back to the uh, right back so we can take the pads so we just use this brake spreading tool it's basically two plates that open up on a ratchet it's not a cortina one <clears throat> it'd be a nice tool to have for cortinas but this one doesn't come narrow enough at certain points you wouldn't get it in you'd have to push your pistons halfway back anyway before you could insert this tool a narrower version of this would be very nice be interesting see if there's one out there because they are quite handy so it's a ratchet it's reversible so one way loosens it one way tightens i can't do it with one hand the usual one hand crap that's going on usual anyway that pushes them back i'll show you the seals if we can get this out probably can't hold on all right yeah you can get it out that's the spread it looks like a tie fighter uh, okay seals in there then Pistons and seals are in. Uh, something I noticed 
when fitting these piston and seals I just had to go over a little bit more with this tool notice there's still a little bit of corrosion in the groove the rubbers were struggling to go over the piston so even though they were oiled up and in as I slid the piston in and it hit the seal the o-ring seal it certainly it certainly wouldn't push by hand very easily you kind of have to just like feel it and if you're not pushing exactly parallel you'll skew off the piston anyway I got it in the end I just got it going and then I had to slightly tap it on the floor opposite sides and then I felt it go past so struggled a little bit with those seals I have done them in the past and they've been a lot easier than them I don't know if those seals are just a slightly bit thicker than the ones I've used in the past don't know I've got another piston to do now the same procedure clean out you can see even though it's been in de-ruster there's still some stuff on there so we need to get that shiny so we use this and it gets inside it's air powered but you could uh, just use fine grit if you wanted and that's also do it that's just a bit quicker so this one's done anyway I'm gonna unscrew this I air tested it as well gently I, le I left the nipple bleed nipple open I didn't put it under full air pressure because I don't know whether these can take air pressure it might to damage them I don't know and also really these are, are dry but I'd rather test these with fluid rather than air but I did go under low pressure just to see them moving so that I could push them back just to see that this everything was okay it's not a reliable test it's best to put them on the car there's no reason why there should be any problems pretty straightforward operation we'll get right on and do the other side and I'll, I'll take you out to the car we'll get these bolted on Here we go, connecting all our pipes up now that we've built earlier on in the films. We'll see everything all line up. Again, our one-handed wonder situation where Pete needs both hands on to get everything lined up. That's going to bolt to there. That goes into the top. There's that lovely formed pipe with the new flexi hose on. That's the little sleeve in case it rubs the spring. I think it, I think it goes that way around. The idea is if that goes back on full lock, that's a protector. Can't see it being used up that end. Given that that all moves, I wouldn't have thought so. That's on caliper there, of course. Pads kit, fitting kit for the pads needed. The cheapskates sent me the pads in an in an odd box without the fitting kit. How cheapskate can you get? Local, local motor factors used to do the pads they now seem to be drying up so it's more stuff on ebay that less stuff at the motor factors so get your stuff from your motor factors while you can because it seems to be less and less cortina stuff at the motor factors now whoops struck the camera then <laughs> we hit you see that hit the camera did you see that blooming heck did you see that we hit the camera. <laughs> wow. Right, that side's all done. Other than the brake pad fixing kit, which I'm waiting for, all the pipes are in. And that's looking nice there. I think you'll agree. Over this side, we are short of flexi hose. And I've just got to finish that other caliper off. Reason being, trying to get one of the cylinders in. I'm not happy about one of the caliper seals, so I've ordered another one. It... Uh, it shaved a bit off when I was squashing it up. I don't trust it. I'm going to order another one. So I'll switch jobs, keep the time economical. And now I'm going to start looking at, at welding. 
and the damage in the floor area before we do we're going to clear all this old carpet out and all this mess and we're going to see we're going to jet wash down because we can because we're outside one of the advantages and we're going to see how much floor damage inner sill and outer sill damage there is on proper okay so the first bit of rot inspection now here we go carry a bag and just whisk all this rubbish out first vac out then blast out henry pressure washer rubbish bag check let's go It's a question of patiently picking away at all this now to reveal the floor pan in the driver's foot well and imagine that after this point here it's mint pull the mint there that join line might leave a little bit around here Okay, all the soundproofing's removed, all the, the tar pads, and I've now got a rust solution. This is called Rust X or X Rust. So I dilute one to ten, and I'm brushing it in so that I can see the extent of the rot. And this is just going to clean up the surface rust, and anything that's mint's going to show up pretty quick. It's just going to stop anything in its tracks for now we'll finish with a dinner troll rust converter this isn't a rust converter this is a removal uh, solution rust x i'll show you the bottle in a sec if we look down here then we've got pretty much a solid panel to the edge of the inner sill until it reaches this area so the extent of the rot is about seven inch diameter area a little bit on the inner sill curiously the front inner section of the inner sill where I expected it to be bad is actually intact which takes us inboard makes it a little bit of an easy repair so you've got three stage repair here I'll bring you in now so you can understand exactly what we're gonna do this lower bulkhead panel here let me see makes it this lower bulkhead panel here so that needs a section cutting out and it welding in that's a small piece then another piece in there that's if this hasn't compromised or rotted I should say a better word and um, or otherwise it's one section this level piece which would be difficult to shape although not impossible could be all right depends on its inner lip so we investigate this area and just see what kind of piece it could be a larger piece but it's overlapping this so we do this bit first because it goes underneath it and it's actually only missing a small section of its edge there so not much missing there so and then we just got to see how far it's perforated so far i'm there i'm not tapped this when they get a toffee hammer and start tapping it feels good so far but we've heard that one before haven't we the inner sill needs a piece uh, probably just a square and i'm not going to say to be fair ah, it's actually gone it's a larger piece so we're talking about 
a section it's actually a square panel though it's going to slot straight down between the outer sill and the inner floor edge and that's really pretty much a straight square we'll cut on this line then weld along that line then shape it back with a croc sander to make that slight radius and we'll lose it on that line it's easy to weld to so cut straight with the angle grinder an easy angle to get cut the square piece of steel slot it down get it at the top then at the both ends and we leave that piece here and we weld that from the outside with some plug welds into this section this section while that piece is out we may replace this top piece so we've got a good sandwich of metal the sill will then go on the outside as well so the sandwich is the inner sill is sandwiched between the inner floor edge and the outer sill lower lip reasonably easy job to do and not a, as look much rot in this side as I expected the difficult shape up there in the far corner looks like it doesn't need any work so that saves us a lot of those complex shapes although they're not that complex but they're, they're not as easy as just straight square piece that we've had there so some solution on again you can see when it foams up that's it reacting with the rust see each pass you see a, a foam up this will take a quite a long time overnight for this really and I suppose the items need to be submerged as opposed to brushed on but it is working and I think you could soak some cloths and leave them on there but I'm just gonna keep doing this and then wipe it back and just see it's gonna you know you've got to leave that for a while cooking and then come back to it so as long as you just keep doing other jobs but it has brought up it's got that section clean some of this pitting it'll never do it's just a simple and initial first strike we shall be using Dinatrol rush converter if the metal is not pickled but we only do the final rust converter stage once the welding's done the reason for that is that the welding will crackle along with the rust converter whereas it won't with the X rust because this is water soluble and we jet wash it off afterwards okay now going to the other side although I'm not going to be tackling that just yet we see a similar story could be worse probably is because it's near side up further by the pedals we are good to go there's no rust a little bit of corrosion around the steering column surround something's leaking in there could be a perforation in the bulkhead quite possibly it does correspond to where there's some rust in the upper part of the bulkhead we'll investigate that um, further up the A panel we're good to go no rust camera slowly tracking round so yeah with um, with the X rust here it is show you the bottle NCH's S X rust okay that's just helping it'll also be getting put in the door seams as a pr uh, primary operation before the rust converter and then the wax oil initially then my my feelings on this very pleased very pleased indeed with that outside you'll see the lower part of the sill has gone here well, that's where we cut we've got a donor section to go in the wings got to come off for this so we attempt to repair the outer section where the jacking point is yeah I would say this is the better side <clears throat> okay I said I get some welding underway and what I've done, I inspected where the rot is on the floor. Not that much, but enough that needs doing. So I've cut out the rotten metal, then shaped one of these repair pieces just like this. It's a good fit, by the way. We've got it cut just right. So that section you can buy. Well, that's a long full piece of the car but I've just cut, cut the piece that I need the rotten metal's gone 
so all that's out <clears throat> and we needed a floor edge that was decent so it's handy to have this little floor edge of perfect so that just goes in here tricks to get your cuts as close as you can okay it opened out a little bit there that's my fault but it's, overall it's flush enough to get the butt clamps in sounds rude but they're really effective and um we'll show you those clamps to basically space it out a mill and clamp it flush so you can get your welds in then the inner sill needs fixing i've done this stagger cut because it gets progressively less rotten towards this end so I'm going to cut it that way, so I'm just trying to preserve as much metal as I can. You could have just done one straight cut, but it's actually easier to weld across, up, across, up, across, up. It's actually easier. So I've drilled little holes because I'm going to jigsaw this. The reason I'm going to jigsaw this out is it gives me an exact template. If I angle grind it, you don't get as good a template. And I'd like the piece of metal that's going in here to be a nice fit straight in. This is the inner sill and it comes down and below the car and sandwiches between the outer lip of the sill and this face of this floor panel repair piece that we've got so that's how that all works I've done it before on, on other cars of course it's slightly different for me this time because it's localized as opposed to the entire run of the car but because this car is quite solid there's no need to go further back you're just wasting time doing that and losing metal of course so that's the procedure, get these lined up, and then we've got to do the sill part of it. So I've removed the section of the sill that's damaged, and that's just the, dam the damage is out. And there it is, bits of it, here it is, the sill piece that we cut out. You can see I've kept it to the bare minimum. See how I've just took the rotten bit out. Like that no more and no less and then when this inner sill comes down you'll get a sandwich here you can already see it's starting to take shape with just that piece you see put that over there for now. the hardest part of this is making the shape the bottom of the a panel here because it curves round and it's quite a complex shape but that's the last job the main thing is to get this stuff done so we're up to this point there's a little piece there of inner sill but it's all doable so I've cut that to specific shapes cardboard will go behind here to get us a template a piece will slot into that then it's a vertical piece down with a curve on it for the bottom of the a pillar shape then another piece here curving and meeting it with a right angle lip on it then stitch it all together that hole will be treated separately look at the mint condition of the rest of it though even your troublesome a uh, tops of your wings haven't even rotted so this is good all of that's all of that's solid wing off of course so yeah we're good to go there if you, if the lens needs cleaning i'll clean it looks like you might need that lens cleaning apologies if you've been looking through a, a hazy shade of pale okay i've jigsawed the metal Got the clamps in position and just mocking it up with that floor piece you can see it's pretty much there we have just got to close the gap up a little bit on that last one but um that is it the butt clamps give you that couple of mil to infill with weld so we can close it up a little bit what i'll do is get some weld going at that end and we'll just hoik this up at the back and it'll close up even more floor piece we can spot weld that to the inner sill from outside i'll need to remember to clean the face and weld through primer that before we start this operation uh, on this black primer but we can get some tacks in that inner piece to get it just in position this hole here you have to just i'll just shape the rest of that hole see i've cut a v in it just wants finishing off couldn't make the shape with the tin snips so I just put a V in it to mark it and then that'll just scallop that out with a croc sander there's another hole which will drill with a proper drill bit so the floor follows along there there might be a little gap at the top I don't know but I think we're pretty much there 
I overcut here because I'm not perfect. See that over slice? And yes, there's a wafer a bit too wide, just right in front of your screens where Pete's cut a bit wide. But hey, you know, no one said it'd be easy. So that will do the inner sill repair and it'll do the floor edge and inboard repair, which means inside the car that's done. We can then switch to working outside on the remainder of the A panel lower repair section, which is a complex shape, and then a pretty straightforward run of fitting a little splice of new sill section in, and then attaching the bottom of that new section of sill to the outer edge of that inner sill. So you get the sandwich effect I was talking about. Sandwich effect being the inner floor edge, the inner sill, and the outer sill sandwich in the inner sill between the two that's how that works and then we'll re-seam seal that little repair hole to do here and don't uh, describe a car as having a, a little rust bubble about the size of a five penny piece because it's not it's the size of your fist people saying there's a little rust bubble about the size of a 5p no don't try and diminish it by saying it's the size of a 5p because that's just the tip of the iceberg are you going crazy no I just read a car advert uh, there is some bubbling about the size of a five pence piece other than that the car bodywork is good no 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 5p piece Okay, that's all welded up. I'm just going to take the uh, head off the weld now. Welding's gone quite nice. A good run along there. So there'll be a couple of little pinholes. I'll go back and fill them in. But we're all done. So it's croc sander time on this. And then I can get that floor piece put in. Get the book clamps along that floor edge. And then we can uh, finish that little job and start working on the outside bit. I'm going to use some weld through primer now on those cleaned up edges just along this edge for the weld through and on the other mating edge of it just that cleaned edge there for the weld through to go on and then it's mating face down in the bottom there so that just helps a bit of corrosion it will also allow you to weld and the spot welder should get through it normally does so we're going to spot weld that edge from the outside to make it neater and then use the normal welder straight down the floor edge from overhead should be pretty easy okay welding clamps go in ready to get some tacks on where the clamps are we can move them along then take them out and move them along so they just a little bit of metal between the clamp goes between your join and there's a bar on the other end like this in my hand here great little tool bar on the other end clamps from underneath you wind up the wing nut and then that clamps parallel the two pieces of metal together okay you can see my cuts not quite even there there's a couple of gaps where it wanders a little bit just because you're using an angle grinder to make them cuts and the measurements don't always transfer across but we're pretty uh, good I can bridge the gap there's enough there for the welder for me to work with let's get a, a welding run in there now
Okay, here's a section of sill that we cut off. We obviously keep it, some key reference points on it here. It's able to lock into the, the donor sill so we can get the cut line to replace that cut, that missing section. So it's all clamped up. I'm going to hopefully get a good shape out of this. This is a pattern sill and it's a, it does seem crazy to cut it up for just that piece. But I got them for virtually, oh, I think 25 quid each. And I know it's the wrong thing to do, but I will keep this piece because I'm needing the back end. So really the middle section, uh, probably two thirds of this won't be used. And, but I will keep that because someone could make use of it. So it's getting used. If it was a new old stock Ford one, I wouldn't do this. It's a, it's a, a copy one. And I got it at a reasonable price. I know it's a little bit wrong to chop up something like this, but the sill in the rest of the car, there's nothing wrong with it. There's no point making work for yourself. You don't need to do it. It's easier doing it this way. It's got to be done. You saw the spot welds go on there. Got a nice row along. It's good penetration. And that'll help. We we'll should be able to spot weld this on because it's so clean. We should the welder should go through quite nice so we're going to do that as well so i'm going to spray this spray liberally spray liberally with some weld through because it doesn't burn as bad as spray paint so weld through is good for your template and that's that's all you got to do so i shall angle grind that or slitting disc that let that just dry before i release the clamps in case it smudges the line uh, straight down there and that should match that profile more or less and then we're gonna we won't be able to get um, the butt clamps on the we won't be able to get the, the welding clamps on I don't think I'll be able to get my hand in here to feed them in so this won't be as easy to get lined up and we need a different type of system to get it now you can use tech screws and, and pull on them to get it um, I'll have a look, I'll just see what it lines up like, but it's uh, going to be a little bit more difficult. I uh, think, actually, there's a hole in the inner sill needs to be drilled. We might be able to push something through there to try and get the line up. We're going to have to see how this goes. So it's a, it's a butt weld. Let's see what we can do. PC. Okay, I'm just on that cut there, and it's pretty good following it. Deviates a bit here. And the gap at this end is a little bit wider than I would have hoped for, but the main one's that top run. Sitting a bit low, but you have to push it up. You see how it's opened out here? That'll push in. It's going to leave a bit of a bigger gap, as I said there. But if I go too far back, I'll lose it here. I don't want to lose it here. So I'm looking for the, uh, an area where it's totally flush, and it's totally flush there, so that's where I'll get my first tack. Drops in a bit here, but I'll be able to pull that out. So three or four tacks on this to get it flush at the top and start feeding it in, then clamp it at the bottom. And we should be all right there. As I said, we're going to have to infill a bit and it loses that lip to here. There's a, but I'll just put a little sandwich piece in. I should have really cut straight down or left this lip on rather. That cut, cut straight down was correct, but there was more of this lip left. But that'll be the way that it got took off the car. You know, we were wobbling it and, and it would have left a little bit spot welded to the inner the inner sill lip. And that's probably why. But it's not bad. I mean, the main one is there. And let's get some tacks on it.
Okay, everything's going good. That sill's dressed down a little bit there, you can see. It'll need a light skim, but that's gone in nice and was spot welded at the bottom. So that's a good repair, that. And now this tricky section here, our sill's come in handy again because we've cut a section of the sill off, an eight centimetre wide piece, and that forms this sort of cup which the sill would originally have pushed into, and that cup being the A pillar bottom, they always rot out. So it's actually a hollow section that the sill slightly slots into. You can just see the end of the sill is there and it goes inside. So we've made, using another piece of sill, we've made another repair piece. And as you weld, you can hammer it into shape because you get a stretching motion going on. So if you get some tacks in, you can shape as you go. And as long as you leave enough metal, you can plug it in. And we've managed to get rid of that hole at the top using the same piece of metal. It has a, an end cap or it's, it's capped at the end. So what I've done, I've made the correct L-shaped piece of metal, 7x7 seven seven square, that follows down and then it's just at the end of the cap, obviously it's a complex shape so we're just going to weld in the back corner of it then trim it off and uh, you've got yourself the uh, A-panel lower repair, something like right once we dress it up. You probably not know that's been done. I don't think it's the exact same shape, but it's not far off. The wing should fit on, because the wing follows the profile of this, of course. And there should be a wing securing nut at the bottom to screw the bottom of the wing into. We'll fit that, a reinforcing piece inside. You can actually get to that there. So we can uh, tech screw in, and it's got double, double skin thickness to grip the tech screw bolt. If you just have a single skin of metal, the tech screw's gonna spin out. So it's best we do it that way. So just a, one more weld to go down. You can see that we've got that weld in. And uh, this, this weld is really nice. I'm on a, a MIG 170 SWP 170 turbo. That old welder that I had was, I think, faulty from the day that I bought it. And I think that's why the guy sold it to me. I think he knew it was faulty. I might be wrong there, but um, very suspicious. Me and Richard think there was a fault with the transformer because it, uh, it was never the best. I mean, I managed all them cars with it, but it was never as smooth as this welder, and I think that guy knew it. So I got, I think I got stitched up. Might be wrong. It's a supposition, of course. Let's get on anyway. Enough of that. Let's get on. Okay, let's go. Get you set up. Okay, other than a little bit of dressing, that is done. Pretty good bottom A panel repair. A little bit of infill to do on the weld here, just a touch, and then that's it. Dress up a little bit more with a croc sander. We're out of croc sander belts now, so we're stuck. But I'm going to put all the tools away. I'm having an early break, going for something to eat early. It's a nice afternoon. I'm going to have a drive out, a bit of a bit of relaxation. Because we're pretty ahead here, so that's good. They're putting a new roof on next door. If you wonder what they're banging it, but yeah, that's nice. It's gone how we want it, really. As I say, just needs a little bit of infill. I just welded the corner in, then trimmed the excess off. We've got that overhang tag lip that follows that lip. Spot welded on at the bottom for the overskin piece, all the way along, and we're, we're done. Pretty neat repair. Got to do the same on the other side now. Got to do it all over again. With the welding finished, I'm just getting all the under seal off here to see if there's any rot underneath the wings, but uh, it's pretty clean. There's nothing to weld under here. A little bit of rust treatment needed. That's about it. And we're going to cover this with um, a Raptor colour matched in just uh, for the sake of it. Or some Gravitex. I'll see what I've got in stores. But uh, we're done under here. Looking pretty cool. Okay, just using the electric air gun and some bare metal red oxide primer. Thin down a little bit and spray liberally. Spray liberally. And then just go over the seams where we've ripped off. Because when we wire brushed this area here, we pulled all the seam sealer out. 
So, factory, they just blobbed it on, as you well know from the other vids. There was no, uh, there was no real care. It, as long as you got it in the grooves, just like Madonna said. So we red oxided it up. There's a grey primer uh, underneath the uh, the bitumen that I took off, and I was careful not to damage that grey primer because that's the Ford's original grey body coating. So that's uh, wherever it was scuffed and gone through to bare metal, the red oxide takes over and covers it. So. We shouldn't get anything coming back there and we're going to use a stone chip, stone guard, possibly a colour matched one on this later. But we'll do the other side first, the same as this, because you get a litre of this Raptor and it's pretty expensive. I think it's at least 40 quid, 45 quid a litre. So we want to do both sides with that because once you put the activator in it, it sets. So you can only use it within 12 hours or something like that. So we want to do both sides in one hit. We'll probably colour match it to Tawny Brown. There's about 20 quid difference between that and a non-tinted one. Well, for the extra £20, £10 a side, is it worth not doing it? And just tinting it in, you may as well make it look good. Yeah, it's going to look mint, too mint compared to the rest of the car. But hey, there's nothing wrong with mixing up a bit. Right, we've got a metal plate that needs to go in here. See that hole, but we're good on the top. So we're going to treat this with the Dinatrol Rust Killer. Little plate to go in there, about the size of a five pence piece, to go in there, and then we rust treat this. I've ground it back with a wire wheel, using a pretty powerful wire wheel. I'm looking for it as I speak. Can he? See? Oh, it's on the grinder itself. That's why. Right. This one, these type are good where eye protection those little strands can fly off and embed in the eyeball but that's a good one that is a zip zip wheel okay zip wheel everybody very good and advantage of working outside advantage of next door extending the house as i keep mentioning it means that i'm off radar and uh the dust and the crap well i should move that car though uh is all outside so no need to tidy the workshop i will have to jet wash back here these stones are going because i'm getting asphalt down or tarmac so these stones are going so it doesn't really matter so this is the last the last for our plates are on plate on and plate on i'm just going to take the, the head off that weld grinder ready now and I think that's that's that we can prep that up on that top wing rail get it looking nice this is good stuff corrosion protection rust converter in white water based hard and thin film over paintable one liter RC 800 by Dinatrol going on to convert the rust down on this wing rail you will see I'm gonna get it into that back panel fold there so it Capillary, capillaries in work our way down wing rail then very common rot spot on the Cortina highly likely yours is rotten if it hasn't been treated pull your wings off and you're bound to find this unless you've done a, a restoration you're going to be lucky to get away with it to be fair it's one of the big ones it always happens they always rot plates are in there's no real point cosmetically working these plates. If it was concourse, I'd have worked that in and filled it. But for this, it's not worth doing. I say not worth doing, everything's worth doing well. But we're not going to skim those in. If the car comes back for a full on concourse, then that would be addressed there. This is just to hold back the rust and keep it sound. Little drop on of the rust converter here dabbing it in water washable so get your brush straight in the tap sink or water vessel as soon as you're done because your brush will, will wreck otherwise in no time dab it in and spray liberally t-shirts are available now in the store spray liberally t-shirts signed by me 
no not yet but it could be a good idea all the catchphrases you've come to get used to at Pete C and Cortina City like oh yeah spray liberally want to buckle my shoe uh, there you go all the classic catchphrases we're gonna get them made into t-shirts ladies and gentlemen in YouTube city time look at that yeah, now ain't our honey converts that rust chemically converts the rust and that stops it in its tracks I think I might put a little bit of seam sealer on there. They never did it and they should have done, really. That's a water trap if I ever saw one. Straight off the scuttle, straight under that lip. No wonder that rotted. It got attacked from the top and attacked from the bottom. A double hit for that. No wonder they went. You can get that as a repair piece. It forms part of the hinge structure, but just the over piece is available. But it is actually all part of your hinge structure. Plate. That one in remarkably good condition never seen one that good before so stepping back for a quick budget restoration i think uh, we're doing a reasonable line of quality work clean solid and uh, and there you know once this uh, stone chip goes on yes you could have dropped the clip and uh, you know powder coated all the clip it could always be done i'm just getting the car up and moving it could always come back in and get stripped back again it's worth it such a solid shell but for now keep the rust at bay get the car on the road and see where we go from there we've done the bulk of the work that side let's go over to this side and see what rot awaits us when we take this wing off so some 10 mils down this inner piece 10 mils across the top bumper to detach indicator wire to detach couple of fixings at the bottom at the front of the wing and you're good to go. Let's get this off. I've got a ratchet spanner on 10 mil going in with a torch. Wish me luck. I'm going in. There's the 10. You can just see them down that run there. So let's get those off. Initially, we've got rot more than the other side. Dollops of gunge and gook. Dollops of gunge and gook. Could this wing even be rotten? We were hoping this wing was a sabre. I think it is. You can see why they rot. Look how it traps the mud there, folks. Oh yeah, all this rot is waiting on your car too, it's waiting on your car too, there's a rusty Cortina under your bed, vote Cortina, ah yeah, <laughs> oh yes, 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 come on, hey, Okay, wing is off. Damage report. Front valance, good. You can see where the extreme heat's caused the the uh, bitumen to, to slide. But uh, yeah, that's okay. Inner wing, oh, all fine. Uh, wheel well there, good. Jacking point gone. Smashed through. Could, you could, just about save that just about we'd have to extract it off its spot welds with them pretty hefty spot welds on them but probably better off attacking it from the back you could at least use it as a template we've been here before with these jacking points mad mike made some good ones there's that bottom of the b panel a panel gone same as the other side but slightly less floor wise let's take a look inside come on in What's left of the carpet I've ripped out. I'm going to take this, what would have been a mat pocket, just a kick panel. What's a mat pocket on a GXL rather? In a sill there, floor, I don't think it's as bad as the other side was. It looks like we'll only need a small channel repair on that. First thing to do is to get all the debris out, vac it out, and then blast it with a jet washer just to get all that fur off there and then break the tar pad up same as we did with the other side we need to break down that tar pad so we start by cleaning remove this panel here and start by cleaning like we did that side see remember we'll clean that side 
we've got to get something like that you want to be working with the clean still a little bit of welding to do that side of course a couple of the holes to close up I just wanted to break the back of it and some grinds to clean them out of uh, sanding belts that's why we've not gone any further there uh, so yeah I'm gonna get a bin bag bin bag this up vac screwdriver flat blade to take off this kick panel vac and wash folks for this job next before we do anything okay let's have a look wing is off front valance okay good inner wing good and clean jacking points gone there you can see it could salvage that jacking point at least use it as a template mad mike's good on that one a panel lower gone through same as the other side that's lower bulkhead section and floor pieces okay a panel is okay a couple of perforations with nothing major floor then doesn't look like it's gone as far back on that um, that floor edge it starts the corrosion around here not as far back as that side but we've got to get this clean so I've ripped what's left of the carpet out there's now some stuff to bin bag up get this kick panel off and then jet wash this then chisel away all the under seal so we get it like that side so we need clean metal to be seen what where we're up against right let's get cleaning up I'll clean all this mess up now Okay, here's, a, here's how I take out the, the soundproofing or the, the mat in the rubber, the tar pads. You're going to go in lines and you're going to go neat and you're going to go methodically. You've got your chisel here. You've got the air gun underneath the chisel heating the blade. You've also warmed the floor up and you're just going to unscroll it in nice sections. You don't probably need, on this car, need to go inboard. We will have to go along that strip there. But we don't need to go right the way inboard on this. I don't think there's any rot that way. So we can probably just get away with that. We could take lift the whole lot up if we want. I don't think it's going to be necessary, to be fair. We could just get a repair tar pad in and, and mount it flush. I think we're wasting time by going inboard. I really don't think there's any rot. C certainly on the side of the car when I've gone under, shows no signs. It's just this about 10 centimeters inboard from the inner sill. So look how we're doing it. We're just scrolling it out there like that keeping it neat. You can see that we're, uh, we're pulling back from that inner edge and we're finding no rust just five centimetres in, maybe just one centimetre actually, what am I on about? There's nothing there, so we only need to do this much. I think that's the area, we don't need to take any more sound matting. We don't need to take any more sound matting out. I'll show you what I mean, look here's the last, here's the last piece. If I just place that into there and push watch it's clean 
it just carries on being clean inboard. So we've got some rust here. We've got a patch, that's a local patch. It doesn't need much beyond here and here. So we're good there, we may as well keep that shape. So making sure this isn't hot. So where it joins the two halves of the floor, the lower bulkhead to the floor pan, that's intact. So all we've got, this side's slightly better then, although more rot on the inner sill, that doesn't really matter. Entire inner sill section needs to be removed up right up into the nose. So more heat, uh, more sealant to get out this time, the body sealant as opposed to the floor tar pad, take that out. Then we're gonna be drilling some spot welds on this. This is an extraction job, cut it. A vertical cut, take this trim away. A vertical cut around here, take all the spot welds off that top lip and surgically remove a section of the inner sill. We've got a lot of good floor section here. It's gonna make life a lot easier. We're only gonna need a small angular repair piece just at the front. So if you do this methodically, we should be good. We should be good. This shouldn't be too bad a repair to do. The, uh, the spot welds are quite clearly pronounced, so we'll get on and do that. Okay, straight back from that little car trip. Mark Free Club meet there, and straight back to the metal fabrication. Our next mission at the moment is inner sill, and inner sill needs jacking point. Jacking point doesn't exist, and they don't come with the pattern inner sill. So what I've done, chiseled, chiseled off the old jacking point, what's left of it, we've got the shape there but it has got a, 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 a an imprint in it like this so what I've done, I've welded a bit of metal to it here, drilled a hole in the in the donor plate and then weld it to what's left of the jacking point then using my little panel beating hammer, panel beat round and press the shape into this metal and then we're going to break the weld off or grind it off then flatten this piece out and this piece will then fit to the larger gauge metal because it is, the jacking point is thicker gauge metal. You can see it there. So we've got the right gauge here, but you wouldn't be able to hammer that. So what we'll do is we'll over skin that onto that once we've really straightened the bash marks out of this and you should be just left with a clean imprint. And we spot weld that to the face of that then there's a scallop to do for the jack to go in, but we'll definitely be able to get the faceplate part quite easily. The scallop bit for the jack's a little bit trickier, because that's a kind of rolled shape. We'll find it in a minute and I'll show you, but basically a little tip for you if you want to get impressed shapes. Get a good attachment to the donor piece and then bash it over it. Okay, it's not going to be exact, but it's going to give you an imprint. Looks rough at the moment, but you'll be surprised how... Uh, better this looks in a minute when we're finished so if anyone asks how did you get the imprint well we've had to bash it in once it's got the stretch marks knocked out and it's cut to shape and it's put onto the spot welded onto this gauge steel you'll have the first part of it there's then a second strip that goes over it I'll show you curiously the jacking point on this side is a different shape than that side I don't know why that is if you look, <clears throat> here's the tab. There, that's the tab there. But this one doesn't have this rolled edge unless it was missing off this and it rotted off. Could have done. There's like a rolled edge there. As it curves around into this, it looks like that's rotted off this one. So we might not be able to get it all. I certainly don't need to have the rolled edge on this piece of plate. You would have that on the, the thicker gauge metal. I don't know if I'll be able to hammer that into it. And that piece is, I think, rotted off. Uh, the imprint is kicks across inboard on this one, but the opposite way on this side. I don't know why, why that is. Anyway, before we get there, I've got to release this and start straightening it. And then getting it cut to shape. Okay, let's go. Let's get that done. Okay, we're on the, the anvil now, on the bench, and just knocking this into shape. So first job, flatten out the steel. And I used the vise and just kept turning and crushing it initially, rotating round, flipping the vise, just like, whoa, there goes the hammer, just like this, squeezing up on the handle, squash. 
till you get that shape. And then what you can do, you just use, you need really one of these hammers to shape it with. Whoops, I caught the camera. <laughs> and then we're going around like this into them corners, flipping it. Then can you see where it's tried to just be not quite as pronounced? So we can tap that back like this. get that really nice and straight don't worry about the blobber weld that was necessary to fix it if you hadn't fixed that there's no way you'd have knocked this shape into it see how it's getting nice and square now then again you go round you're gonna flip it and you're gonna butt it up to the edge of the anvil like this then really work those corners and get them nice and pronounced so it'd be something like if I can get it with my foot because I've no tripod today there, see how we push it up against it, and that's going to work that shape for you. So it's a little bit crude camera work there. Eventually, we'll get that in, and then it'll be flat. So, what we've done here's the thicker gauge, I've copied that shape onto there. And now this lives on the top of that, like so. That will live on there, and that will give you that. And I bet you by the time I'm done, you won't be able to tell that that's a copy. Okay, see that? It's a simple technique, really, no specialist tools needed or skill particularly just a little bit of um, lateral thinking just think out the box a bit let's get that a bit more pronounced and then we're pretty good to go there what I'll do is I'll draw flip that we draw this on the back then we cut this piece exactly the same shape as that there is a piece of curled metal I've found and it's intact so we could probably weld it to the bottom of this and then we should have that done. Leave it with me a sec, let's do some more miracle work. Right, well you're going to see that we've managed to graft that piece, there was enough of it. See that's the inner part of the section and that's where the, it guides the jack when you jack your wheel up. It slots through there and that guides it into the chassis leg. So that was still pretty much intact until it met the bottom of this piece that we've made. So what I've done, if you look, I've pulled, filled it, pulled it with weld inside the back. Can you see that pool there? Nicely gathered around. I got a, a nice build up a weld glowing and then just let it I just push the puller weld forwards and let it creep as it went and find the edge of the metal rather than strike the weld into the the, the rusty metal I built the pool upon the clean metal then pushed it and it began to heat up the and burn the rust now as the welds met uh, sorry as the weld met the metal there it was able to fuse in quite nicely so it's not crusty it's it's really it's really um, bitten into uh, that metal as you can see there, so we'll clean that up a little bit. That that welder that I've got, that SWP, I wouldn't have been able to do this type of repairs on my old welder. It just wasn't capable of doing it. It just would not perform. I don't know what the differences are. And don't forget, I've said this before, I'm not an advocate of blaming tools. And because you, you could say, well, you know, you're blaming the welder. But I think with welders, you've got to get them set just right. And also the welder has to work. I think there was a problem with that transformer on my welder. It, it would weld but it didn't like uh, how can I put it it just wasn't as smooth but it would it would penetrate through this is a lot smoother and it, this just makes it half the time the other one would took, take twice as long because you were going back on yourself so yeah that's helped fabricate parts like this that and just 
having all the bits. Luckily, there was enough metal left because that's now the shape. You can see how I've even got the curve in that corner there by building that up with weld, grinding it back, then infilling it with weld again, and then just slightly tap the edge of that piece of metal, the thicker metal that we cut earlier, until it meets it, and then begin to fuse the two together so it becomes almost seamless. And you're almost getting yourself the real deal okay there's well behind there we're going to brush that up with a croc sander that would be visible and obviously this face of the um the piece needs to be clean because it's got to attach to the inner sill that's where it belongs we have to plug weld it on so you don't want any raised weld there that might get in the way although this is probably just below deck so it probably misses it anyway progress is good on that that needs the Remember that shaped piece that we did, that would now get uh, spot welded to this. Now we know where the lines are. I'd have to reshape that into it because it's not going to have that in on mine. So we'll spot that, weld that on and then then weld this piece up again then scallop out again. Because remember, you've got that, that punched piece. You'll see what I mean in a sec, but uh, that's that's gone good. Pleased with that. That's pretty neat. Right, we're looking good. I decided to spot weld this on just because it's going to be less rock trap than having two bits of metal sandwiched together. I was thinking, well, you're going to have to get a continuous weld all the way around, and what's going to happen is it's going to creep in behind it because this gets hit directly in line with the wheel. So we're going to end up, I don't know, it just felt a bit better not to have two. And also, this piece to go over it was slightly undecided with the fact that it was cut the wrong way so a couple of reasons really i just think it probably actually end up being need to spot welded you could put a very light seam seal but what will happen with this is the the raptor will actually seal that edge in yeah there's a hole there we have to fill that but there's another piece that goes over this now which is like a fork a ribbed fork so we need another bit of the thicker metal cut the ribbed fork put it in the vise and knock some edges onto it weld it onto it and scallop the end and then we're pretty much Done that can then be attached to the inner sill of yourself then the near side jacking point okay looking nice a bit close to the car for my liking this actually I mm, shouldn't really be doing this close to Bramble oh let's hope we don't have any problems I mean by sparks coming out whoa Oh, amazing how hot that gets. Wow! Whoa, 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 even through these gloves. That gets warm. Wow. Let's get these grips. Woohoo! Hop, 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 hop. Wow, everybody. That is hot so quick off the spot welder. Okay, we're all done and finished and dressed up and I can see now the jacking point in its position where it would go on the inner sill with the exception that this lip here would be flat on a proper genuine panel this is designed to repair you inside the car as an overpiece don't forget not a Ford panel this we wouldn't have this cut out here either for the crossman but these are designed to get you out of trouble and get you inside the car anyway you can see the rest of it shaped correct and you can see that the piece we've got you have this little tab at the top so that you can when they build the car you slot that behind the a panel here and it enables you to assemble the car and that's what that little tab is for at the factory so this would be attached to the inner sill at the ford factory like so and you can see that this angle is designed to fit into there all lands in the right place and that's the completed jacking point we've got that little hole which goes through into the second section into that uh, recess that we formed by hand remember and then the scallop out on the that little fork that I've made can you see that's just a piece of the thicker metal with two edges in a vise measured the distance from the other one from the top and bottom 
then let these angles go all the way down, then cut them away later, then scalloped it out to match the profile for the bar of the jack to slot through, and that's your reinforcer rib. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a Pete C. Cortina City copy jacking point. Get you out of jail jacking point. You wouldn't get one. So the only way to hand make, and that wasn't hard. I think that's in the scope of everybody watching. Your hardest job, of course, making the shape of that uh, little knockout, uh, that little dimple thing, that, that pressing rather. The rest of it are pretty good shapes. If you didn't have that shaped piece at the bottom here that I've made, it's not that difficult. You could knock it over some round bar maybe heat it up to do that to get that and you could do it it'd be handy to have references to go off i was lucky i able to i was able to fuse all of this together into something right and then it would fit in here like this and you can see there's a jacking point it's had some pressure on that because it's elongated there even that's damaged to be fair but this would go in line with it. Can you see how that would work? And this would land here. And indeed, you can see where the tabs sort of punched through there. So this fits something like this. Yeah, we'll go around and compare it to the other side. I don't think it's a clone, but I think it's. I think you'll be impressed. An acceptable level of quality. Let's have a look. Of course, we're all clean this side. There's some seam sealer on this hiding it a little bit and and the pressing is reversed this side so it isn't actually symmetrical which was is how I've copied it so I don't think it's wrong because it's not but um, yeah we've got there's the tab you can see how they would have got the inner sill pushed it in and pulled it up and that tab would have stopped this moving around probably for when they're assembling it see that that locator tab just to help them build the car okay so this piece is mirrored there so it's actually actually viewing it the wrong way round so it is actually right that you, you're viewing it inverted this whoops this is coming in this way like that but side by side what do you reckon are you, are you into the city Oh, what? oh, I can see this ear wants shortening. See that ear? That just wants taking down a little bit, not much. No, then, then you're good to go. And that's about it. all we've got to do, unless, actually, no, this one's longer. I've done it right. That one's longer, that one's shorter. No, leave it alone. That's nothing wrong with that. Lovely stuff. Right, let's get. I'm going to tool down now and tidy up for the day so I've done another 4k run and a 10k yesterday so I'm having earlier nights it's lovely evenings by the way hope you're enjoying the summer it's the 21st of June 2022 hope you're enjoying the sunshine not getting and because we're ahead there I think we can have a beer and celebrate that get some food and then we'll start again tomorrow for you just a few minutes for me, a whole lifetime. Just unloading, freshly unloaded, a lovely GXL TNH. This is a beauty, and you're at the Cortina show. This is a lovely car, look at this. Hell yeah. And look at the van that goes with it. Look at the van that goes with that. We are boogie bust up here, look at this for boogie bust. Boogie bust, bonus footage then. The end of Papa, bit of welding, bit of restoration on Papa, but look. For this, a transit. Boogie boss. Isn't that decked out nice? This is... I'm loving the badges, loving the stickers and the models, the bed. 
the 70s girls will be queuing for this one a bit of action there on that chrome work and just on cue Pete C gets invited for a coffee at this uh, lovely setup and we've got many more cars waiting for you to see at the Mark III Nationals show I'm going to go and get Bramble in the Crescent Horseshoe display that we're doing today for everybody open to the public so we're going to go and clean our cars and get uh, lined up in the show away we go but we'll, we'll film up there's a there's a super speed here as well can't wait to go and see the super speed let me get set up Cortina is here. Copper bronze, John Culshaw's old Cortina, PVX triple one M, two liter E, tan interior, copper bronze, nice. Got a custom in onyx green, uh, side draft carbs on that, nice. I think this was Steve uh, Joyce and Joyce and Steve's um, three liter V6. Look at that with a nice side deflectors. Love it. We've got a nice cross flow 600 in this XL. Tony Brown, nice. Looks pretty original to me. This is a really nice car. Plenty of Mark III's, folks. An XLE, big, big engine in that one. That's got an Essex engine in it. They imported them from South Africa. Good ones. We've got a Silver Fox XL. Rare, rare, rare in Silver Fox. Black interior on this one. Looks like it's not been messed with. I do like this originality on this one. Look at that. Just patinaed up. Two litre XL. A lot of them were 1600s. Look at that. Reg all the eights. KGN 888K, nice plate as well. And it looks like just genuine wear. I don't know if it's had a restore late 80s, early 90s, and then it's just gone back, or whether that is the original paint. I'm looking on the rubber to see if I can see any overspray marks, just to see if it's had a paint job. If it's not, then it's remarkable to have survived like that. 
I can't quite tell if they have done it they've took the door handles off because there's no overspray <clears throat> initially it looks like it's the original paint that if it is is a rare machine well that's correct if you look at that panel at the back when it comes down that seam join so far looking at this and they all have that kick out look Tina G's got it someone mentioned it to me look at that kick out on the bottom of the door there just one of those design things I know the door's not fully shut but it's very pronounced when it's when it isn't you have to bend it in but I think this car's on its original paint it's, it's incredible really so one of my faves in terms of Silver Fox being red and then we've got Dobby the Crayford that's um, Helena's and Bobby's Crayford a very nice paint job by Bobby there this got a bigger donkey in it if you look it's got that EFI unit in which fits in pretty neat look at that you'll not go blind driving that was a really nice car then we've got Moo Moo, I call Moo Moo, it's a GT in Mays, nice one, great reg as well on this one, did live down in the Midlands, made it back up to Scotland, so Moo Moo's up up in the Scottish part of the world, looking Moo Moo nice, mine there of course, and then we've got that nice orange estate, a very 70s colour on Ronnie, look at that, ain't Ronnie nice? I do like Ronnie. Naming myself a lovely yellow one as well. Next to it. This is superb as well. Look at that. I presented very nice. OLH there. Then another custom one. He's crammed in the uh, the Ford double O red cam engine and it just about fits looks nice to be fair. It's just in it up against that heater box there. Just about got the room and the main Gareth were debating whether they scalloped the heater boxes out and I got it wrong. They did. Scallop being there for the V6 engines to clear the heater box. And South African ones had a cut down heater box as well, which is sometimes made of metal. Bigger brake servo on that. That's on a, I think this is on a facelift dash. Yes. So on an N. GPR using the uh, inner high beam lamps as the air intakes, I like that idea. We've got uh, Andy Clayton's Reginald is here, ready to carve you up. Reggie's ready to carve you, as is solid, complete. Now this is what you'd be running around of taxiing in the late 80s, this uh, style. Yeah, I like the way Andy's gone to town on this one and just saved it from the dead one of uh, Cortina City's cast off wheels found its home in the Marcus Blue interior there four door I think he's got a 1600 lump in it I can't remember if he's got the drop to 16 or has it dropped to 2 litre in this one now that's how you found them rough and ready this is the late 80s and this is Reginald and then across to a 2 litre E nice car lovely 70s colour again this is Chris's colour now look at that in sunburst, I think sunburst, I think it is, on an E, nice condition as well, look at that, again a custom engine, another EFI in similar to Dobby's setup, you see how they do that, just shoehorn that in there, there's plenty of room, and you can see the power steering pumps juts out to the left hand side, that scallop in the inner wing gives you a little bit of clearance to work on that unit and just to swing it out to swap a belt so you get you don't get it striking the inner wing because of the scallop on the left hand side helps you to do it. That's why you always wondered why that uh, inner wing scallop was there. This, let's just check that code, is it Sunburst? Sabring, 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 I should know. And then this blue, I thought it was Olympic blue, might be wrong. On Olympic blue here we're gonna to have to ask Steve this is Steve's machine 
he's too weak for me there and he's slowly adding bits to it we've got some c-pillar trims to change on this car for him he's just got the the chrome strip on it at the moment but that's a works in progress you get your mobile works in progress he's done some sill work and some welding on that one then we bring ourselves to the super speed of course only two but we know about um this one isn't the one you saw on ebay this is uh this is one same color but um just the other one. i've never seen this car before so you've got the super speed it's got the essex engine in it and quite a few tweaks on these vehicles look at those wheels on that the super speed badges it is the genuine article as well that's a rare beast as i say only two and they're on the two door so a beautiful machine i looked under the engine bay on this it's very solid it looks like original paint on the inner wings owner said it has been painted but it's in very good order very solid machine customer very happy with it don't blame him because it's a beautiful piece of kit like the reg as well that covers that line we're now down to the last line lots of mark threes it's the mark three nationals e eho triple nine another all the same number we've got a triple eight and a triple nine both on a k so that gives you this one on a k as well two town paint running on the road and driving on a two door gt of course then you've got pixie f just as is run around looking nice though because again you got to keep them on the road i do like the leopard print look at that for custom oh yes that's nice this we like this has been this has been leopard printed hey i'm a big fan of this that's that's totally 70s that is whoa this is my favorite so far this is my favorite this one this is the one for me a leopard print interior just have another look at that leopard print hell yeah that's a that's a good bit of fun that car someone's having a great time there do it driving around in that just again looks like it's uh, the end of the 80s and it's just like they're all hanging on in there and then Paul Stones' ex car again always just indestructible in originally in sapphire blue GXL and Paul Stones the tech advisor in the club just keeps it going and he's sold it on now PRN 642k sapphire blue one then a very nice estate car now look this one slipped under the the radar KMV 210p facelift estate uh, midnight blue maybe I think it is midnight blue I said no no it's midnight blue is on the pre facelift I have to check the color on this but that's beautiful as well I don't know the blue I wish I knew me paints folks you can you can you can kick my ass that what color blue is this do we know Midnight blue, midnight blue, and it, royal blue. Thank you. Get ro thank you, royal blue. Take it from the the man who knows, the man who owns it. Royal blue, very nice. Then we've got another silver machine. This one you've seen already at the NEC when we filmed uh, Crayford convertible on the P facelift in silver. Nice in silver two door was at the NEC very shiny so these are all club members Paul Runton's um, oh or he goes rowing in this one at the GT You have seen this one around on your travels. It's a popular one. Gets out and about. It was on the Top Gear Grand Tour episode 13. Then a nice copper bronze XL. M uh, WTW. Of a good reg. Copper bronze. Beautiful machine. Nice paint finish on this one. 
interior looks good this is presented very well period publication magazines presented very nicely with all the trinkets on it do like this look at that all right now ain't that nice with another copper bronze one it's just at the front of the parade almost in, in line with that then Mike Jarman's Jev is here a stalwart of the scene he just keeps on smacking the miles onto this machine again well presented he's got all the, the 70s trinkets adorning the inside of the car and uh, he takes pride in driving this one this two litre -y. again we're gonna have to check the color but I'm thinking sir sunburst red i'm thinking let's go and ask the man sunburst red that's the end of the review for those an overview of everything we're all here weather's good storms last night but this is what i did after the welding and that was it so let's get back to papa now a little break just to show it's not all work and no play back to papa see you in a bit we're gonna get back on the road soon see you in a bit peace see you.